We will call to, to order the regular board meeting of the Board of Election Commissioners for the City of Chicago. Good morning. My name is Maricel Hernandez. I'm the chair. And with me, the uh, video conference is Commissioner William Cressy. Commissioner Cressy? Present. And Commissioner Jonathan Swain. Present. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, consideration of the agenda. Any proposed changes? If not, we'll proceed with the approval of the regular board meeting minutes of June 23rd, 2020. Is there a motion to approve? So moved by Commissioner Swain. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Cressy. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, state aye. Commissioner Swain votes aye. Commissioner, Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Motion passes. Um, the next item is the executive director's report. Mr. Goff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Answer muted. I'm unmuted now. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't uh, get a chance to thank everybody, so I'm going to do it at this meeting. Uh, when I first became executive director, I remember uh, had to meet with uh, George Dunn and I had a meeting with Harold Washington. And Harold Washington informed me, he said, Lance, you know, if you take care of the community, the community will take care of you. And that's something that I've held really, really strong. I see my friend Juan Andrade, that over many years, we've uh, done elections together. I've uh, listened to him. He's been a big partner of the Chicago Board of Election. And, yeah. and your friendship has always been needed and wanted. So I want to thank you. Um, Betty Magnus. Betty Push has been a big part of my, uh, my life from the beginning. And uh, it's been an honor to work with everybody at Push. You, Reverend Wilson, and Reverend Jackson, who at times calls me at the weirdest hours of the day and says, Goff, let's talk. <laughs> so I will miss those uh, conversations. Oh my God, I see Jim Scanlon. You know, you always keep your attorney close to you, something that I've learned over the years. And Jim, you not only was a great attorney, but a good friend. And uh, now we have Adam and Joan who are both great attorneys and I believe you keep them in the mix. So it's been great. Uh, Kathy and Yvonne have been with me for 30 years, sure. they've always been there. And uh, my board, I've been uh, friends with a lot of my board members, but this has been an honor to serve uh, you, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Cressy and Jonathan Swain, who I've known uh, both a long time. Charles Holliday, Charles Holliday has been the Assistant Executive Director I knew him when he was in charge of registration and before that. And Charles Holliday is, uh, is an ideal person for the, to take over as executive director. In fact, he's, he doesn't run out of steam like I do. So he, 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 he's going to be a, a great ex executive director, and I wish him all the best. I see Commissioner Hicks, my good friend. Thank you, Commissioner. Jim Nally, Ed, how you doing? Uh, from Cook County Clerk's Office. It's been an honor to have you guys here. But what I want to do is come in and thank my employees. But before that, I was going through my all my junk mail and, and things that I had collected. And I found a book 
hearings <laughs> before the subcommittee on elections. And I testified in um, October 3rd, 2007, the importance of poll workers, best practices and recommendations. It, this still holds true. If it wasn't for the poll workers at this last election, we would not be able to get over this. This was the, probably one of the hardest elections we'll ever see in our lifetime. I want to thank everybody that worked the polls, all the watchers that were there. You know, you need somebody to, to look behind you, to look over your shoulders. And uh, the watchers that we've had were were very good. And uh, I, I appreciate everything they've done. Claire Tobin, uh, Helena from the League of Women Voters, God bless you guys. If it wasn't for you to get the help that we needed, we wouldn't be there. But I wanna talk to my about my employees right now, which I've said twice. Human resources, Lucretia Dandridge. Uh, Lucretia and I have had some issues. Uh, she was trying to keep the office safe and I was trying to run an office during a pandemic. And sometimes we did not uh, see eye to eye, but I appreciate her for keeping this office as safe as it, we have been. Uh, we've had some outbreaks, but we went through them and she's done an excellent job. Uh, registration department, Jim Carley. Jim Carley took over from uh, Charles and Jim, you've done an excellent job. The type of work you've done in the petitions for this agency have been great. Delilah Smith, you've been great. Carol, Carol Triplett, Chris Tomchek. I've con cost, called Trim Chris Tomchek about districts and boundaries more than he wants to even pick up the phone. When he sees my number, I guess he says, here's that crazy guy again. Uh, Mike Check with all your information. And Mark August, this election with vote by mail, Mark August in charge of the mail room. If it wasn't for his knowledge of vote by mail, if it wasn't for him to actually go to meet with people at the post office, he'd make two or three runs a day at the post office and pick up mail. And Mark, we really appreciate all you've done. I'd have. Community services, Audra Lewicki and Steve, just to let you know, I've talked to friends around the United States and they copied our judge's manual. And uh, somebody told me uh, copying something is the greatest form of flattery. So we should be honored that, you know, people look up to uh, what we've produced at this agency. Uh, Paulina, supervisor of judges. Can you imagine we had for one of the first times all of our judges spot, spots filled? I have never seen anything like this. This is incredible. Uh, I, God bless you and you, Linda, for all the work you guys have done. Our warehouse, Keith Carter. Okay, Keith, this is the last time you'll hear from me. I used to call up Keith at two, three o'clock in the morning. I would think of something. And one time I said, did he say, set the equipment back for daylight savings time? And I called him up and he says, Mr. Goff, no, he called me, gee, I've already done it. I said, well, I haven't asked you the question yet. He said, I know what you're gonna ask me. Yes, I said it for daylight savings time. I said, thanks, Keith. And Derek Hurd, thank you for everything. Um, all the folks at the warehouse, you've done an excellent job. Um, information technology, Matt Lynn. Matt, thank you for keeping our system secure. You and Raul have done an excellent job. TN, Al Chase, for the hours that you put in during this last election are incredible. Uh, I thank God that uh, you were here because it was a tough one. Sheila, Sheila, for moving the phones around that you have with the antiquated phone system that we have, we need to get the phone system upgraded. You've done an excellent job. And we can't forget about Paul. Paul, for the work you've done with our ballot layout, he did an excellent job. And thank God we had him. Uh, Pre-election and voting logistics. Clint Hurd. Clint, I never got a chance to say thank you. You know, the voting at the Cook County Correctional Center has been a big part 
is something that I've always wanted to do. And to tell you the truth, this last time, I didn't even have to worry about it. Clint took care of uh, the correction center, and he also took care of the judicial, I mean, the juvenile uh, courts also. So he, he did an excellent job. Sandra Sparrow, I mean, here's a woman that we went from the primary election for 117,000 vote by mail to over 500,000. And she did an excellent job. Uh, uh, not only her, but with military and overseas. I remember seeing Betty here at five o'clock in the morning answering uh, the emails from people overseas because of the time difference. And I kept saying, Betty, what are you doing here? And she looked at me, she said, well, what are you doing here? Okay. And I said, well, I can't sleep. So that's why I'm here. And uh, she's done an excellent job. Brandon Pickens, Brandon, supervisor of polling places. Can you imagine supervising polling places in the mid middle of a pandemic? The primary election, we had 186 polling places pull out at the last minute. And we, Brandon started working his staff right after the primary and wanted to make sure that we had all of the polling places covered. We, ha we had assignments for all of them. If we couldn't find it, we had them in early voting sites. And Brandon, you did an excellent job. Um, John Powell, uh, supervisor of early voting, all the sites that you've set up, the 51 sites here, and the work that you and uh, Dean Fatikas and Charles did at the United Center was re remarkable. I mean, the United Center is something that uh, my mom was at home and she saw it on TV and she said it was incredible. You've done an excellent job. Uh, Peter Peso, Peter, to always tell me we have no money, but to find it if, when we needed it, uh, I thank you for all your help and over the years. And Miss Walls, I know Miss Walls, you just came to us lately, um, a new hire, but you've done an excellent job, not only purchasing with all the, 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 our staff with the last minute, we need this, we need this, but what you did with the PPEs was, was remarkable. And you kept, kept us safe and I do appreciate it. Uh, Jim Allen, Jim Allen is going to make fun of me. He always does. But, you know, over the years, uh, Jim and I, we've uh, worked well together. Sometimes we've had arguments because there was a way I wanted to go. And he said, well, you really should go this way. And we met halfway. And I appreciate that. Um, you know, there was, I just have to say something, Charles, that when we were in board meetings and somebody would ask me to make a decision on something and I would say, Charles, I'd, I'd let everybody know at four o'clock. And the reason why I did that is you don't want to jump to conclusions right away. Don't say yes and no right away. Think about it. Make sure that your answer is what you want and stick with it. And uh, Charles, I know you will. So to everybody here at the board, I know I missed some people. I apologize. I will go around and say my hellos and everything to you later on, but uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm going to exercise some executive privilege here and uh, take this meeting out of order. Uh, and, uh, and jump to uh, under the business uh, uh, number C. And the resolution commemorating Lance Scott's decades of service to the board. As all of you may know, Lance has worked for and dedicated himself to the Board of Elections for over 40 years. He's been the executive director for over 30 of those years. 
providing the voters of Chicago with equal and open access to the ballot box. He has been instrumental in developing Illinois election law and modernizing our election system. From punch cards to touch screens, Lance has been there and done that. But more than that, he has had the vision to take this board to the next level in technology and innovation and understood how all of this could help our voters. He has been able to establish positive and productive relationships with our communities of color, advocacy organizations, and all our partners throughout the city, state, and the United States. And for these reasons and many more, today we commemorate Lance's years of service to this board. But this board is not the only one that recognizes his contributions and service to the board and the voters of Chicago. We happen to have with us some distinguished guests who have known Lance for many, many years and wish to say a few words. So without further delay, I'd like to ask Jim Scanlon, our former general counsel, to say a few words. Jim. Uh, good morning. I hope you can hear. Um, Lance, I just want to congratulate you. A uh, job well done. You know, most people, when they plan for retirement, they kind of go gently into the night and and. But not you. You, you uh, you're going out with a bang. Uh, I'll tell you. Just. Uh, administered one of the most difficult elections in modern history, not American history, and, uh, and due to your, your efforts, your planning, and your staff, you made it a, a terrific success. Um, but more importantly, congratulations for a uh, great and long career. Uh, I think, you know, by my memory, You've been the executive director for 32 years, uh, 1988, as I recall. You know, the words longevity and election official usually don't belong in the same sentence. Um, so it's really um, a testament to your, to your skills uh, and your wisdom that you have uh, been atop uh, at your game for all these years and you've survived and, and uh, prospered. And uh, it, it's just a testament uh, to your character. Uh, so I just want to congratulate you uh, on a job well done. Uh, you know, you, you've served yourself well in a worthy cause. And uh, I just want to wish you and, uh, and your lovely bride, Josie and your daughter, Lawleen, uh, much success in the future. It's been a pleasure. It was my pleasure to serve uh, in the trenches with you all these years. And uh, God bless you. Thank you, Jim. And next, we'll hear from Thomas Hicks, Commissioner of the U.S. Election Assistance Commission. Mr. Hicks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lance, it's been a great journey. Um, listening to you talk today uh, was amazing. Um, I did not remember that that hearing that you had with the subcommittee on elections uh, was that that was uh, when the Democrats first took over the House after a few years. And I actually served as a senior elections counsel. I'd forgotten about that hearing. Uh, that was an amazing time back then. Um, I'm not going to talk long, uh, but I wanted to just uh, thank you for all the guidance that you've given me, uh, your service to the nation on our on the Election Assistance Commission's Standards Board. 
um, all the all the welcoming times that you've um, welcomed me into Chicago, um, the steak dinners that you've taken me out to, um, the time when we were down in Nashville and you uh, educated me on the fact that uh, opening up my wallet to uh, really good bourbon is not a bad thing. Um, <laughs> And um, I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Uh, the fact that we almost oh, died wow. in uh, Reno, uh, where um, we, we decided that we were going to um, get out there and, and exercise a little bit. So we uh, went on a, a, a little bit of a hike in uh, Reno, Nevada, and um, where it was uh, over 110 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, following Noah crates, which we probably shouldn't have done, uh, where um, I, I thank you for um, calling it and telling us that we needed to turn around and go back. Uh, because if you hadn't done it, I was about to do it myself because I was uh, sweating and, and about falling over. But I, I also want to thank you for um, being a great man because We've worked in elections and, and hearing Jim talk about the fact that you've been executive director for 32 years since 1988. That was the year I got involved in elections. And I know it's been a long time because I'm, I'm actually eligible for retirement myself now. <laughs> but I want to thank you for being a great man, for the love that you have of family and the stories that you've told us. So... We're in we're, we're in a pandemic right now, so I couldn't get my fellow commissioners to do a proclamation, but I can guarantee you that I'm going to push them that we get that done when we get back together. And also, uh, it's a small thing, and hopefully it'll come out on the video here, but um, we give out these challenge coins to folks, um, which we paid for. They're not taxpayer paid, that the commissioners paid to um, give out to individuals for great work in elections. And I'm pr pretty sure you probably already have one or two, but I'm gonna give you another one. So it has our seal, but on the back, it has the Help America Vote Act along with the things that we accomplish. So I wanna thank you for all the hard work that you've done over these last 40 years. And to let you know that you might be retiring, but we're still gonna call on you because we're not gonna let that, that individual knowledge go away. So I'm doing something called Legends and Elections and I'm gonna call on you to film that with me when uh, hopefully in the new year. But again, I wanna thank you for all the work that you've done and know that you're loved and not, you will not be forgotten. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman Hicks. Thank you. And now um, is uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson on. Um. He's needed. Where is he? I guess I mean himself. Oh, um. Reverend Jackson, you are uh, muted. Please. please unmute. He has low bandwidth on his end. Okay, he's having technical difficulty. Perhaps we can move on okay. to the next we'll, one. We'll, we'll come move back on to for a little, come, come back to Reverend Jackson. Uh, next, uh, we have Dr. Juan Andrade, Jr., President of the U.S. Hispanic Leadership Institute. Dr. Andrade. Yeah, his screen is blank. Uh, Reverend Jackson looks like his is back home. And now it takes flesh for what he's done. And let me just uh, double check that. Uh, Langdon Neal. Is Langdon Neal on? Commissioner Neal, if you're speaking, you're muted. No. 
Reverend Jackson, are you available now? I am very much available. Oh, great. Thank you, sir. We see you loud and clear, Reverend Jackson, if you could proceed. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me express my thanks to Golf in a very special way. I think I think of three words, really, political education, access, and fairness. And here in the position that was not very well respected. We, we think about manipulating both the roles. Argue that the, the, no roles go up in the election time, go down off season. We made it accessible. The, the, the prisoners can vote in jail. Youth can vote. Vote in the communities. Access, fairness, and, and education. Uh, the only thing I promise him that he should not be retiring. We have too much work to be done. So if we go retire, now come over and put some volunteers some time. <laughs> Love you, God. <laughs> I will be volunteering, Reverend. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend. Yes, sir. Dr. Andrade, are you available? Yes, uh, just, just now figured out how to unmute myself. Uh, sorry about that, a uh, little technologically challenged. Uh, but, uh, muchas gracias, muy agradecido de felicitar mi compañero en la lucha para el mejoramiento y avance de nuestro pueblo. Just kind of freaking y'all out a little bit there. And uh, just to say hello and thank you all very much. Thank you uh, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning, especially on this occasion uh, where we bid farewell to our friend and, uh, and of course, extend our best wishes and, and uh, express our gratitude uh, for the many years of uh, uh, partnership and collaboration. Uh, it hasn't been just a partnership between the CBOEC and uh, USHLI, uh, but uh, going back to 1982, actually, and uh, uh, that we started working together. It's been quite a, an experience, uh, a great partnership. Uh, when uh, I first started uh, working with CBOEC, uh, Mike Lavelle was the chair, and we worked very closely and uh, because uh, we wanted to uh, advance Hispanic voter participation. And uh, that was going to take a lot of work because we weren't quite set up well enough to advance. I did a research project. Uh, uh, on Hispanic increase in voter registration uh, from the from 1980 uh, and on to you know 78, 79, 80, and 82, and in those four years, the net increase in Hispanic voter registration was 17 additional voters, an increase of 17 voters. And I went and sat down with Mike Lavelle and said, something is not right here and we got to figure it out. And uh, I discovered that it was, uh, there was a, a problem in the uh, purging process. And I proposed a variety of uh, reforms, ways that we could improve the purging process. And uh, Mike Lavelle said, yes, uh, I agree. I think we could improve this and these are, these." Uh, uh, reforms that you propose certainly uh, would help uh, improve uh, this process. And uh, but the problem is uh, I can't just unilaterally do that um, and implement those changes. I said, oh, so what do we have to do? And he said, well, uh, you got to sue me. And uh, that was kind of odd. You know, and I said, well, so I got to sue you to get this done. He says, yes, if the court will order me to do it, then uh, I can. And I said, well, I don't have any money uh, to sue you with. Can you uh, 
uh, help me raise the money and so I can sue you. And he said, well, sure. And so we went to a local foundation here in Chicago and um, we sat down and they said, so what can we do for you? And uh, Mike LaBelle said, uh, well, we need $50,000. Uh, so that Juan can sue me. And, I, and to have the chair ask for a, a contribution so that we would have the money to file a lawsuit against the CBOEC uh, was kind of unusual, to say the least. Uh, but, it, but we got the money, and we did the study. The University of Chicago conducted it for us, and we submitted the results and went to court. And the court ruled in our favor. And uh, since then, at the time, we had 82,000 Hispanic registered voters. And today, I think we have something like 275,000 or more that have uh, registered to vote. And that's because of, of this partnership that developed over the years. And just very grateful for that partnership that started in 1982. And then I met uh, Lance and and uh, the partnership evolved into a friendship. Uh, and uh, I, I can tell you uh, that I've never had so much menudo for breakfast uh, with any person that wasn't Hispanic uh, more than I have with Lance Goff. Uh, he has quite an appetite, as uh, most of y'all probably know, if not all y'all, uh, that he does uh, have a hearty appetite. And, uh, and, uh, I was surprised and pleasantly surprised and pleased that he enjoyed menudo as much as I did because uh, I grew up, uh, as growing up, uh, that was one of our uh, delicacies and we called it the breakfast of champions. And uh, certainly uh, Lance Goff became a champion as well in this business of uh, empowering people uh, to vote. and. Uh, and just helping register so many people here across the city. And uh, my, my voter registration career started in 1972 uh, when I was on the staff with John Lewis out of Atlanta, Georgia for three years. And uh, that was my beginning. And I'm just, I feel very blessed and very fortunate that at this stage in, in, the, in my life and my career, that I, I am completing part of, the, of, the, of this career with Lance Goff because I feel like I started with uh, the best with John Lewis and I'm about finished uh, myself with a great friend here and Lance Goff. So it's been a great beginning and a great ending. But I know that our friendship will continue and um, it's been a great ride. And we thank you for all of the support that you have personally given to USHLI. Uh, we, uh, USHLI, along with Rainbow Push, have both been de uh, decorated by the President of the United States uh, for uh, our service to the nation. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's due in no small part to the uh, wonderful collaboration and partnership that USHLI has had with the CBOEC and more directly with Lance Golf uh, here over the years. And uh, it's just been great. And I know that we just went through an, an incredible election. I want to congratulate you uh, for uh, guiding us all the way through this uh, incredible uh, historic election, uh, probably none more challenging. Uh, the only one that was similarly challenging to you was probably the first one that you administered. And uh, to go out uh, on this note, it's just, you couldn't just make this up. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been great, Chicago excelled and made us all proud. Uh, to uh, get through this incredibly challenging election within the midst of a pandemic. And we were glad and grateful that you and fortunate that you were at the helm uh, to help us get this done. 
and just want to thank you for all of that and congratulate you on a wonderful career and of course and with your family uh that you know that it's just um it's been great it's been wonderful knowing all y'all and uh, we thank you and wish you all the best thank you dr Wan, and hopefully you and i have breakfast again soon <laughs> yes sir and uh thank you dr andrade and now uh, I would like to uh, have uh, Landon Neal, our former commissioner and chair of the board, to say a few words. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, it's an honor to, to uh, be here and be allowed to speak. Uh, I'm not used to being on the other side of the table, so uh, I I'm happy for a change to, to get that uh, opportunity. Um, I don't know where to begin in my praise of Mr. Goff. Um, I, I'd said the first day that I joined the board in January of 1997, that I had the privilege of working for the best election official in the United States. And I can say that in 2015, when I retired, I can say that I worked for 18 years with the best election official in the United States. And now in 2020, as an observer of the skills and abilities and competency and expert uh, qualities of Mr. Golf that I've observed as an outsider, in the last five years, I can say that I truly work, that I should truly know and have worked for the best election official in the United States. And I, and I honestly say that every day to people who call, still call me and ask me what, what, what's gonna go on with our election. And I said, you don't have to worry about Chicago. Uh, we're a leader in the United States and always have been a leader in the United States in election administration. And the reason is because of the leadership of Lance Goff. I, I, I cannot say enough about not only his expertise, but his qualities as a leader of people. Because not only does he have the expertise, skills and abilities, but he has the loyalty and devotion of the staff. And he has never asked for accolades individually. He's always talked about the Board of Elections because the people that work at the Board of Elections respect and admire a true leader. And the two qualities, being an expert in what you do and be a leader of people who admire and will do anything uh, to, to make the organization the best is about all you can ask for an executive director. And so I, I, I just thank you um, commissioners for the opportunity to, to make just a small comment upon, about my respect and admiration and love for a man known as Lance Golf. And I can't wait, I, I, as you all know, I never like to say this is the end. This is just the beginning of the next phase of Mr. Goff's life. I'll be, I'll be watching uh, from the outside and Lance will be able to, when this is all over, we'll be able to have more steak dinners um, on me this time, always, um, as, we, as we talk about um, such, such a very important part of our life in America um, these days as, as a, almost 150 million people have proven this election. Um, so um, thank you for everything that you've done for me. Thank you for everything that you've done for the board. Thank you for everything that you've done for the people of Chicago. As I've said many times, 
before it's all over, they're going to erect a damn statue of you in front of 69 West Washington. I know that'll happen. Um, all the best. Bon voyage. And and um, we, we I cherish every single moment I had working with you. Thank you, Langdon. You, you know, your dad and I were good friends, too. Was, oh, yeah. And uh, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. You're a wonderful man. And thank you for everything. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And uh, now we'd like to hear from uh, Charles Holliday. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Now. I would say uh, congratulations to Lance. Um, uh, I just want to thank you for the many opportunities that you afforded me, having entrusted me, overseeing the registration department, and now having the opportunity and the pleasure of working as your assistant. Uh, I appreciate it very much. I just want you to go forward and enjoy your, your retirement. And when you wake up in the morning, you don't have to worry anymore about what you have to do. You can sit back and pat your feet and just think about what you want to do. Uh, more trips to Vegas. I don't golfing. I, I don't know if you fish or not, but uh, that's relaxing as well. And just again, I just want to um, thank you for all that you have taught me and the direction that you have pointed me in. And if and if it's okay, Madam Chair, I would like to have, have a presentation from the board, uh, myself and the uh, employees of the office for Lance. Okay, Lance Lance F. Gall, executive executive director, in appreciation for your forty two years of dedicated service to the Chicago Board of Elections. I just want to present this to you. Thank you, Charles. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I have to unmute myself. Just the, uh, I'm just seeing several people that have uh, joined Rich Means. Thank you for all, all, all the times we've had in the past, Rich. When I first started off at the Board of Election, you and I worked together and it was a, it was a hoot, let's put it that way. <laughs> Jim Nally. That's one way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're having trouble hearing you, Jim. Nah. He's muted now. Jim, I'm sorry, we're, you're unmuted, but we're still not hearing you. Can you hear me now? There we go. Okay, thank you. Lance, I, I just want to say all my years as a, a practitioner and working with the Chicago Board, I would always tell anybody who would listen that the Chicago Board was the gold standard when it came to election administration and election authorities. And I meant that sincerely, that the people that you brought in, the staff that you had, people like Jim Scanlon and now Adam Lasker and, and, and Joan Agnew in the legal area, top-notch people. And, and that starts at the top. And I think my greatest blessing has been uh, the last year or so when I've now flipped over to the administrative side uh, and a chance to work with you and learn all the inside baseball stuff that, that I never really knew as somebody working on the outside in. And I still am firm in my belief that the gold standard for election authorities is the system you've set up at the Chicago board. And now that I'm in the administrative side, we're going to do everything we can to emulate that. Uh, and your legacy is rich. Uh, Charles Holliday, 
uh, you know, the Adam Lasker, the staff that you're you're leaving behind, the strong board of commissioners uh, that will remain. Uh, we look forward to working with them and trying to meet the standards you have set. So congratulations and God bless. Thank you so much, Jim. I see Ed, Ed's on. Ed, how you doing? Lance, thank you for everything. Since I started with the, the clerk's office running the election authority here, your mentorship and everything you've committed to help us with um, has just proven so to be so gold. And uh, you know, when I, when I thought about being in elections, you know, I, I looked at the way you treat people, and I realized that you place the power in the voters. And that's just such a valuable lesson for me. You're a true statesman, and I appreciate your mentorship very much. Thank you, Ed. We, I have my buddy here, as everybody knows, my uh, uh, <laughs> my my buddy, my friend. We've been friends for many years, Gary Rezizen, who I met when he was the director of elections at Cook County, and well before that, he, we both started off pushing carts, so what it was. And uh, Gary's been with me, and it's been a pleasure. He's been a good friend, and I. I appreciate everything you've done, Gary, and your knowledge and, and friendship has been great over the years. So I just want to let you know that, Gary. A lot of meals together. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Um, uh, at, at this point, I'd like to know if my fellow commissioners have any, any uh, words to say. Well, Commissioner Swain, you're muted. There we go. Adam. Commissioner Swain, are you frozen? I can hear, I see him trying to speak, but we're not hearing him. There we go. I'm gonna let Bill go first. All right. He's gonna let oh, Commissioner okay. Cressy. All right, C Commissioner Cressy will go now. Um, uh, Lance, um, I I have to say when I got up to the board as a commissioner elected by the judges of County, I was apprehensive. Um, for one thing, big shoes in replacing the late Richard Cohen. Uh, but as uh, many of you know, uh, I am the Republican on the board. And as the Sun Times uh, pointed out in a profile they wrote on me when I got, uh, I am a Republican uh, election commissioner in Chicago, also a Republican university professor. And that entitles me to the title of endangered species. I was apprehensive coming into the office, uh, but uh, Lance, you could not have been more warm and, uh, to me and also to my lovely and talented bride. And uh, it's been a real pleasure working. 
disagreements. We've had seen things differently. You've put up with suggestions from Professor Fraud on uh, how to make you know certain changes, but you've always been gracious, and um, it's been a real pleasure uh, working with you, and of course working with everyone who follow in those footsteps. Thing that has made it so easy to work with you. We both uh, live by a, a similar philosophy when it comes to elections, and that is that the process is more important than the outcome. We want to make sure that the citizens of they have free, fair, and open elections, and we're going to do everything to ensure that they get that because they deserve that. So, uh, Lance, uh, I have a feeling we're still going to see a lot of you. I hope so. Um, and 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 uh, draw on your extensive knowledge. Uh, but uh, now I will be seeing you as friend and not just executive director. So uh, congratulations and uh, enjoy your, your time away from this office. Uh, Lance Goff, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And we could get back to Commissioner Swain. Uh, so, so I will, um, I, I will begin, uh, with a memory of my first knowledge of Lance Goff. Um, I was a young man just out of law school, uh, 23, 24 years old, working in a, in an alderman's ward office on the South side. And, uh, I remember coming at, we used to have these booklets they used to print with everybody's position and everybody's uh, uh, phone numbers and back when you didn't have cell phones like we do today and the like. And I remember one of my first lessons was to flip through the book to find out who was who. And I would see this name, Lance Golf, Commissioner, uh, uh, Executive Director of Chicago Board of Elections. And back then being a 20, um, uh, 24 year old, just out of law school, um, kind of overwhelmed by being in this role in Chicago politics and Chicago government, having never been in, before, been in it before. And, you know, as a student of history, just understanding the history of what we were walking into, um, you know, a little overwhelmed by it all. And I remember that the, the alderman slash committeeman that I was working for called, called me in his office and said, you know, call Lance Goff to get some information. And here I am, the 20, Again, a 24 year old wondering, like, is this guy going to answer my phone call and give me the information that I need? Uh, and so it was it, I'll never forget. I made a phone call to, to try to figure out some information, expecting to be handed off to an assistant or handed off to 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 someone in some department. And got the run around because, again, you know, who am I low on the totem pole? But, you know, Lance answered the phone himself and got me the information he needed himself. And I and that was always a memory that I will have about what accessibility in government is really about. Uh, I, I have appreciated in the time of being on this board, uh, watching Lance and his uh, his his even handedness towards uh, not only those that are that may be incumbents, but also those who are aspiring to office. You know, everyone treated with the same respect, with, with the same courtesy, with the same access, which is the way the system should work and the way the system um, 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 should proceed. Uh, and and moving on to 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 being, you know. Uh, uh, Elected to this board by the, as Commissioner Cressy mentioned, the judges of Cook County, you know, filling some 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 huge shoes um, of of you know the chairman Langdon Neal, um, you know, shoes that happen to be on vacation every election day nowadays. But that's another conversation for another day. Um, in fact, you want to try the other side of the table. We can give you some time if you want, Langdon, just to get a feel for it. Okay, no, okay, there it is. Anyway, but filling these huge shoes of this, you know, this this overwhelming presence of of Chicago elections and and me, the young African American who's stepping into that role, I appreciate the courtesy with which you allowed me to grow in the position. You know, uh, I, and 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 like Bill, and I think people would not think this, but we do have disagreements. Though as we as we have conversation in board meetings, it seems like everything everybody's in agreement. But there's a lot of inside uh, a conversation and disagreements and 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 you know tough conversations about a lot of things. And I appreciate the grace with which you've allowed me to grow in that and and to ask questions, to challenge things, and the like. Um, you know, I, I, and I and I'll say one last thing. Aside from you know your role as an election commissioner, uh, I'm excuse me, election uh, 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 official, and one and as, as stated before. You know, one of the best that have ever done it. You know, I I appreciate the leadership you provide to the African American community. 
I mean, Lance Golf, so if I, as I came to grow in the community, understanding what the name Lance Golf meant in the community um, from from in many different circles, one of respect, one of integrity, um, you know, even in our interactions in our own, you know, social club at the time I was a member of the original 40 club, uh, you know, just just a, just a, up, a stand up person that you want. When you talk about the best of what a community has to offer, Lance Golf's name is synonymous with that. So I wish you congratulations, you know, to, to the comments that have been made. You, you're not, you know, going to be going that far. I'm sure people already have lists of how much work they want you to do. Um, starting with Josie taking you someplace. Um, I'm sure the, the plane tickets are booked. Well, I guess you can't go on a plane now. I guess you're stuck in the pandemic. Let's put them to work. There it is. So um, we appreciate you and we appreciate all you've done for, for, for maintaining um, the, and you know, uh, um, I, I'll say this last point. There's, there's a, Jim Scallon and I have often talked about this one court case that talks about and echoes and is often referenced when we talk about um, election cases that, you know, Chicago has a history of, of you know, either be it fraud or be it whatever in an election. I, and I asked Jim one time about why do we keep referencing this this term, uh, this statement, because and why do people keep referencing it? Because, because you know, it's, it's in the history and we can refer to it, but that's what we're not trying to do. And so um, I will say that, you know, as you look back on Chicago elections and the history that it's had and, you know, all the people saying you need vote often, vote twice, vote this, vote that, I can say, and, and, I'm, and I, I'm honored to say that, you know, I work with someone in this position who's put all those, those thoughts to rest, put all those um, uh, uh, stories to rest, put all of those things to rest, and, and to know that we have one of the best elections in the United States of America being led by Lance Gall. So um, I appreciate you, and I wish you best. Congratulations. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Um, uh, and Lance, I think there's one um, theme throughout this whole uh, throughout all, all of our speakers uh, that they have uh, uh, brought out, and that is uh, your, your excellent uh, leadership uh, and, and uh, directing this, this uh, agency, um, the wealth of information, um, and um, giving of yourself totally to the voters of Chicago. Um, it has been an honor to work with you. Thank you. And um, now at this time, I'd like to uh, read uh, the resolution in honor of Lance Scott, our executive director. And uh, we're going to host it. And I'm going to give it over to you so we can read it along. And it says, Whereas Lance Goff has served dutifully and faithfully for more than 40 years with the Board of Election Commissioners for the City of Chicago, and for the last 32 years as the Executive Director for the agency, and whereas, whereas Lance Goff has managed the agency through four decades to expand access to the franchise while enhancing the Board's voting systems to increase fairness, transparency, and accuracy. And whereas Lance Scott was a change manager who introduced hearing officers for electoral boards, motor voter, online and election day voter registration programs, expanded early voting and vote by mail services, electronic poll books, ballots in 11 languages, three new generations of voting equipment, polling places in the jail for pretrial detainees, the first ever super sites and vote by mail drop boxes, and who encourage staff to explore best practices in other jurisdictions. And whereas Lance Bob has mentored a series of commissioners and board managers in all facets of the administration of pre-election services, commu community services, voter registration, balloting system preparations, and post-election canvases and recounts, 
And whereas Lance Scott has been recognized as an international leader in election administration by countless colleagues throughout the United States, including the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, the Federal Voting Assistance Program, IACRIOT, and IGO, the Illinois State Board of Elections, the Chicago City Council, the Cook County Board, and varied federal agencies devoted to voting rights, accessibility, and election integrity. And whereas Lance Goff most recently postponed his retirement to guide Chicago through a pandemic election, that ultimately was one of the most challenging and successful in the city's history, notable for shattering records for vote by mail and early voting, while introducing new voter information programs that made these systems more transparent and user-friendly. And whereas Lance Goff is leaving on the high notes of introducing online poll worker training, fully staffed precincts, and the most ballots cast. The Board of Election Commissioners for the City of Chicago salutes and expresses its deep gratitude to Lance Goff for his exceptional contributions and career, and be it further resolved that this motion be spread upon the official record and that a copy be presented to Lance Goff. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution commemorating Lance Goff's dedication and service to this board and to the voters of the city of Chicago this 24th day of November, 2020? So moved by Commissioner Swain. And it is my honor and privilege to say the word second. Okay. It's been properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. Commissioner Swain votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. The aye have it and the motion passes. Congratulations, Mr. Goff. It's our honor. Thank you very much, everybody. And now, unfortunately, we have to go through the rest of the agenda. <laughs> so um, I think, Mr. Goff, did you have anything more regarding your report for uh, this particular election? Um, Madam Chair, um, uh, Mr. Holliday, who is taking over, will do the report for the election. Okay, thank you. Okay, and so we'll proceed with the Assistant Executive Director's report, Mr. Holliday. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm here, Charles. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, as you said earlier, we'd just like to thank our staff for the tremendous job that they did for this election. Uh, I had a total of 11,834 assigned and served judges, 238 substitute judges, 1,824 assigned and served election coordinators with 46 standbys. The judges of election and election coordinators payroll has been completed and they have begun to receive their checks. All other payrolls are being processed at this time. We had a total of uh, 406,141 voters that voted early, vote by mail, 454,944 uh, vote by mail ballots. Precinct voting, we had 294,510 voters. Provisional voters, 5,398. A total voted of 1,160,933, which is about 73.28% of our 1,005 voters. During early voting and grace period, we collected a, a, another 1,506 emails for voters uh, that makes access to the voters much easier. We were looking for a higher number, but we did get the 1,506. Uh, the staff has begun after the election cleanup, and um, 
we've um, starting Monday, we've we will start with the staff a reduced schedule to uh, try to keep the pandemic down and uh, not so many voters here, voters, so, not so many employees here in the office. We're kind of going back to what we call maybe phase one, where those vote, those employees who can vote from home and have uh, the laptops, we allow them to vote from home and just to have maybe 30%, if that much, of the staff in the office to keep the operations uh, rolling smoothly. And um, that's, that's the report, Madam okay. Chair. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Charles. Oh, oh, no. oh, he's good. He's good, sir. Yeah. Just to add something, uh, we, we had attorneys out on the field this time on election day. And it's something that worked out well and it's something that I think the agency needs to increase. To have uh, a group of attorneys from different uh, uh, bar associations means a lot uh, to get uh, the population or, or different, uh, uh, different uh, groups feel that they're included also. So it's, I, I really incur, encourage the Board of Election to uh, increase that uh, on Election Day, having those attorneys out from all the different parts of the state. I agree. Thank you. Um, and now uh, we don't have a report from communications. We do have one from strategic planning, uh, Mr. Allen. Good morning. Um, I want to thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me to deviate and talk about my good friend, Lance Goff. Um, <laughs> this is hard. Uh, you know, it's it's rare, rare that you get to work with someone that you really get along with and who's not only a mentor, but who has your back and who teaches you the best way forward of not so much by force, but by example. And with Lance, if you ever sat through a, a management meeting with all of the managers assembled around a giant set of tables with 40 different people, he his effort was to make sure that all of the pieces of that jigsaw puzzle understood what the other individuals had to do and to understand the flexibility and the preparedness. And just to give you a couple of quick examples, last year, um, it, it, it comes as no surprise to me and to Adam and, and to others that we pulled through this as well as we did with this November election, because last summer, Lance oversaw um, a massive preparation effort to go through a virtual tabletop exercise with all the managers to prepare a, a comprehensive continuity of operations. And he, he helped me, uh, allowed me to draw up some of that. And when we got to this one session about uh, what if there were a cataclysm at the, at the warehouse to replace equipment, we had come up with this elaborate plan. And Lance says, no, there's a simpler way to do this, Jim. <laughs> you just get cardboard ballot boxes, you secure it, you work on printing out ballots by precinct ward order, we'll set it up, we'll get it corrected, and we redrew the plan and got rid of all the complicated muss and fuss. The other thing is Lance knew and taught me about using finesse instead of force. Um, there were a lot of times where I wanted to go full steam ahead with something and he said, you know, there's just give it time, give it time, there, there's a better way. And Jim Scanlon and the chairman uh, and, the, and, the, and the current chair were all advocates for universal vote centers. And Lance said, I think there's a way that we can do something within the current framework and create a super site. And uh, we rented a Walgreens and the rest is history. And now he's laid the framework to in, inform lawmakers about what's possible with that 
over the last several years, and now the United Center. Um, lastly, his style was warm. It's one of friendship. Um, disagreements were professional. They weren't personal. And it can be described best as open door and hands off. He let you fly or crash, but he also made sure that if you're gonna crash, you better have a backup plan ready to take care of it. Uh, the hours that he has put in, I can't think of another public servant who has devoted more time and love and passion to a job than Lance Goff. And people don't realize the, the dedication. I remember several years ago, he was, he, we, we assembled in his home in Hyde Park because he had undergone surgery and he refused to be sidelined. I remember from countless elections, him having to deal with not only the phone calls, but the doorbell rings from panicky campaigns and election officials, uh, or, or rather campaigns and, and party officials who were worried about something. And he calmly uh, finessed all of those conversations and brought them back to our staff and made sure that we were prepared. I, I, I'm always gonna treasure you as a friend. I appreciate your support and even your understanding at times when I wanted to use a battering ram and you wanted to use a much more lighter touch. Um, again, thank you so much for everything you've taught all of the staff, the citizens and the voters of Chicago are better off for your leadership. And I can't thank you enough for being able to serve at your side. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, thank you. Jim, for everything. Um, we will now proceed with the agenda. Um, old business infrastructure projects and changes in election administration and electronic poll books and voting equipment. Um, I, I assume uh, we're, we don't have anything new on that. We're... Not at this time. <laughs> Okay, uh, legislation, Mr. Laster, anything? Well, thank you, Madam Chair. The legislature did cancel its uh, November and December veto sessions, so nothing much going on right now. Okay, thank you. Um, to new business, uh, we have a resolution for the disposal of materials and records from the following elections, 2016 primary, 2018 general, 2019 municipal and aldermanic, and 2019 runoff. Mr. Lasker? Thank you. So the statutory preservation periods for these elections have come and gone. So we're outside of the preservation periods and there's no uh, litigation pending regarding any of these or anticipated. The warehouse is getting a little full and they've requested um, authorization to dispose. Um, is there a motion uh, uh, to adopt a resolution for the disposal of these materials and records? So moved by Commissioner Cressy. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Swain. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Commissioner Swain votes aye. It's been pro uh, properly moved and seconded. We have uh, uh, the ayes and the resolution has been um, approved. Next is uh, an employment contract for Charles Holliday Jr as the board's next executive director. Uh, uh, the period uh, shall be from December 1st, 2020 through November 30th, 2022 in the amount, annual amount of $160,000. Uh, any questions from the commissioners? If there are none, is there a motion to adopt the employment contract for Charles Holiday Jr.? So moved by Commissioner Swain. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Cressing. It, thank you. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, state aye. Commissioner Swain votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Motion passes and the employment contract is approved. Congratulations, Mr. Holliday. Congratulations, Mr. Holliday. 
Um, next item on the agenda is a legal report. Mr. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for my legal report, I would like to point out that the Board of Elections has not lost the lawsuit in, um, since I've joined. <laughs> I think that the only, and that's not because I'm a good lawyer. That's because every time I've gone and had a conversation with Lance about how we can or cannot do something, he has absolutely 100% wanted to hear my advice and follow my advice and guidance in regards to the law. Never felt ever questioned about whether you wanted to do the right thing. You always have wanted to do the right thing. So it's been very easy for me to defend the board in court. I know that there are a few times in the long tenure of Jim Scanlon, my predecessor, a few times where things uh, were not successful in court. But as I go and I look back in most of those instances, the legislature would then go and change things to make it the way it should have already been. This board has, for as long as you've been here, Lance, acted with integrity, done things the right way. I know that Jim Scanlon felt the same way every time the two of you talked. You were trying to find out what's the right way to do it, and that's the way you were going to do it. No exceptions. It's been a real honor for a somewhat young attorney like me to join this board and have a chance to start my career here with you. I started off with Mike Lavelle, who you kind of started off with, too. <laughs> I, I did, too. I did, too. And... Uh, it's, it's quite, I feel like I do get to carry on a bit of a legacy. And it's just been such an honor, Lance, to start off with you. And I think that one of the incredible things about the way you've run this agency is that someone like Charles Holliday can start at the bottom of the ladder and reach the very top. And Charles, I'm extremely excited for the future we have together because also I have never questioned your dedication to doing things the right way. And I know that that's going to continue. And I'm very proud now to have this torch passed to you, Mr. Holliday, and to be able to work by your side as we go through what I hope will never, ever again be an election as challenging as this one. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Lance, thank you. Charles, congratulations. Thank you. And that's my legal report for today. Thank you, Adam. Uh, we have no financial report, although I do wish to uh, wish uh, Mr. Peter Pesso happy retirement. Um, and um, I hope you enjoy um, all these years to come with uh, your wife and your family. Um, the next item is public comment. Um, and uh, I'd like to know if we have any um, anyone out there. You should be able to unmute yourself if you'd like to speak for public comment. Hello? Yes, I would like to. And who is this? Uh, yeah, this is Dr. Laura Chamberlain. And um, can you hear me? Yes. Great, excellent. So um, uh, we wanted to we wanted to congratulate uh, Mr. Lakoff on his uh, retirement, and we appreciate um, his legacy at the Chicago Board of Elections as well. And uh, Mr. Goff, you know, you're going into retirement and the election integrity community could really, really use somebody of your experience and stature uh, to advise them. So you know how to get a hold of me. <laughs> but we do appreciate very much, Mr. Goff, your experience. And uh, we definitely welcome uh, Mr. Holliday into the executive directorship as well. Thanks so much, Mr. Goff. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chamberlain. Uh, Trish, have you received any other requests? I have not. Oh. I, 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 I see Jim Wicklander. If I'm allowed. Uh, number one, I want to let you know how proud I am to be part of your team and to do it right. Uh, I'm knowing that understanding the expectations and help making it happen is so important. 
uh, I wish you, Lance, and the entire Board of Elections continued refinement and success moving forward. And I am proud of all that has been accomplished and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Helene, do you want to say anything? I see her there. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Chicago, I want to congratulate you. And in fact, we have a special event coming up next week where we're giving you a special award. Uh, it's been uh, a privilege to be the board observer for League of Women Voters of Chicago for the past five or six years. And I've enjoyed watching your expertise in the way that you deal with people, as has been said, with finesse rather than force. I think that's a very important thing, and we certainly appreciate all that you've done to make voting accessible, easy uh, for all of the voters in Chicago. And best wishes on your retirement. Thank you so much. I think this is all. Oh, hi, this is Claire um, Chauvin from Illinois Ballot Integrity. And we want to also wish you much happiness and freedom from, you know, the big responsibilities that you've had over the past how many years. And we've all really appreciated your openness to welcoming um, the public and our, ourselves as poll watchers and, and uh, you know, pointing out things always asking for something more, but we really appreciate that you've done such a wonderful job and we're thankful for um, all that you've done. Good luck. Thank you so much. I don't see, I don't see any other requests or, or people who haven't requested. So I think that's it. I see, I see, I see Betty. Betty out there. What, what are you doing, doing Betty? Betty? Can't hear you. I think she's <laughs> muted. Just go ahead. Can you unmute yourself, Betty? Um, I think that concludes our uh, public comment. Is there a need for executive session today? Not today. Not today. Not today. Um, in that case, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this historic meeting um, where uh, we have shared so much.